Hello everybody, my name is Sean Abramson. I'm a certified Magento 2 professional developer. Uh, I am the owner of Mage Module, and during the day I am a Magento tech lead for a very large Magento agency. Uh, the reason that I'm making this video is to help other developers. Uh, throughout the earlier years of my career, and also even on my own team at my full-time job, I see developers always having issues with their virtual machines. They're either having trouble spinning them up or tearing them down or getting them to run fast enough or getting them to run at all. Uh, and so for the last few years, I have been using this particular combination of Docker containers plus Magento 2 or whatever project. Um, and it has worked fantastically for me uh, throughout all of this time. At night, I can tear my containers down, uh, or even during the day, it doesn't really matter, uh, and switch to another project, and then in the morning I can spin it back up. Uh, all of my database data persists. Um, it's as if I never tore down the virtual machine at all. Uh, it run, runs the Magento 2 instance fairly quickly for a virtual machine, and uh, all around it's just, uh, it's just a great setup. And so... What I wanted to do was make this video as a supplement to my blog article in which I teach you how to get the same exact virtual machine setup that I use. And so what I'll do throughout this video is I'll just simply follow along my blog and um, follow each step and go ahead and spin up the virtual machine. So without further ado, um, there's a couple of prerequisites. Uh, the first is you need to install Docker if you don't already have it installed on your computer. Uh, beyond that, you'll also need to install Composer. Uh, and then the third prerequisite is to have a copy of Magento 2. However, we don't really need to do a separate download for Magento 2 because when we use Composer to install the project, it will download all of the Magento 2 uh, website files for us. Uh, and so for the steps, we need to create a docker-compose.yaml file. We're going to spin up our containers, and then we'll simply install Magento with the optional sample data. Okay, so for the first step, uh, what we'll do is assume that you've already installed Docker and Composer on your computer, and we'll just go ahead and run through each step of the blog. So let's go, at, let's go ahead and open up a, uh, a fresh terminal window. And in this first block of code, you'll see that we have this CD into a fake path. So basically just decide where on your computer you want to install your Magento instance and obviously just CD into that path. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brand new demo folder that I've created. So I right click and for those of you that don't know, if you right click into the context menu and push the option button on your keyboard, this is for Macs of course, you'll be able to just simply copy the path name and you can paste it right into your terminal. Okay, so I am there. And so the very next step is let's go ahead and use Composer to install the project. Now, obviously you can specify whatever version of Magento that you want. I'll just go with the latest. But for those of you that don't know, if you want to specify a specific version, uh, right here just add a colon and then the version number so for example 2.2.3 and it'll go ahead and grab that version but as of today the newest version is 2.2.5 so we're going to go ahead and install that okay so that installed uh, rather quickly. I think that's because all of these sub-repositories were already cached and so it didn't need to do a full download all over again. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and make sure that our VM is going to run as fast as possible. So the first thing we'll do is I'm just going to show you that in the HT access file, um, and actually, it really depends on which index.php file you use. So if you're going to use the one in the root or the one inside of the pub directory, there are two different HT access files. And by default, they either specify a PHP memory limit of either 756 megs 
or 768 megs. And so we're gonna go ahead and fix that, but let's just go ahead and take a quick look. And of course it opened in my other monitor. But, okay, so we'll see here that we've got 756 megs. Uh, Magento re recommends 2,048 megabytes, and of course I just recommend it because you want your virtual machine to run as fast as possible. The life of a Magento 2 developer is definitely spent uh, waiting for page loads quite often, so let's try to minimize that. So all we got to do to fix that is let's copy this entire code block. paste it into our terminal, and it's going to seek out the appropriate files in which the memory limit is too low, and it's going to update them. Okay, and so if we take a look at our HT access, we should be able to verify that the memory limit has increased. So there it is. Okay, on to the next step. So we need to make an entry in our host file for our fake domain. So for the purposes of this demo, we'll use local.domain.com. And so obviously, if you're going to use any different domain, just simply modify that line before you, before you run it. Okay, so now it's ready to run that particular domain from our browser. So our next step is to go ahead and create a docker-compose.yaml file. Um, in the blog, I describe putting the Docker file in a different directory, but uh, truthfully, it's not needed. So we're going to go ahead and put our Docker Compose.yaml file right in the root of our Magento installation. Okay, so we are already in the correct directory, so let's go ahead and create a Docker Compose.yaml. And let's go ahead and open that up in a text editor. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and copy all of this content into our new file. And we're only going to make one, possibly two changes. The first change is if you're not running on local.domain.com, you'll need to update this with the proper domain. Um, and the other change is obviously we need to go ahead and tell um, Docker where to find our Magento installation. So the way I have it set up in this example is with an absolute path, but we can actually use a relative path since we're already in the Magento installation. So we can just change it like that. Not sure if it's going to like it without quotes, so I will just go ahead and add those in and save. And so one thing I'll mention is that this particular Docker image, it's made by a company called Web DevOps, and they offer quite a few uh, free Docker images that contain pretty much anything you could possibly need for Magento 2 development. So uh, I didn't create this image. It's not my custom image. Um, I just really like it a lot, and I recommend that you use it as well. You'll notice that um, we've mapped a few ports, so we're going to run our website on ports 80 and 443. Uh, truthfully, we don't even really need port 80 map because I generally run all of my local websites on HTTPS, and so port 80 really never comes into play. Uh, and because I'm port 22 is not available on my on my local computer, my host machine, I map some other random port number to port number 22 within the Docker container. And this is just there in case you want to use SSH to connect to the container as opposed to using uh, Docker exec or Docker attach or something like that. Uh, so we're going to use an instance of MariaDB uh, to run our uh, website. The root username is root and also the root password, I'm setting it to root, but you can make it anything you'd like. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and call our database Magento. Uh, I've also added phpMyAdmin for those of you who, who like phpMyAdmin. Personally, I use MySQL Pro, um, but I think it's really all just a matter of preference. Uh, and finally, this last little uh, piece right here in our Docker Compose file is a data volume. And so this is where all of our database data is going to be stored. 
And this is what allows us to persist the database data. So if we were to you know, go to sleep at night or switch to another project and we have to tear down all of our containers, we can spin them back up and all of our, all of our database data is there. Um, we don't have to reinstall Magento or anything like that. It's just there and ready to go. And that is all due to this uh, da data volume. Okay, so our very next step, let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And I can see we have our Docker Compose file. So directly from the blog, you can go ahead and just simply copy this line. And this is one that you should really commit to memory because you're gonna use it every time you spin up your Docker containers. Okay, and so we can, I can see that all of the uh, containers have spun up. So we have our database, our web server, and of course, PHP my admin just in case we want it. So we'll just do a quick Docker PS. Everything seems to be up and running. These are our container names, and here you can actually see the mapped ports. Okay. Um, and so here's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and attach to our Docker container and install Magento 2. So without SSH, this is the actual way to connect to a Docker container. So it's docker exec uh, it web is the name of the container. So web matches web up here. And so you can actually connect to any of these other containers if you need to. And bash, of course, is the uh, shell that we're going to use. Okay. So we're in the container and we want to change into our app directory. And one thing I should mention is that the app directory that we're changing into is the web server's app directory. It's not the Magento app directory. Magento's app directory actually lives at app, app, okay, just to avoid any confusion. Okay, so we have all of our uh, files. They're all properly mounted right to the app directory like we had hoped. And so the first thing we're going to do before we run Composer, uh, before we run Composer update or install Magento is we are going to deploy sample data. If you don't already have a set of Magento uh, keys to access the uh, to access the repository, there are instructions in the blog on how to get those. They are free, um, but you do need to go ahead and grab them. Okay. Once we have entered our keys, I like to hit yes just. Uh, when it offers to store the keys, I like to hit yes just so that we don't uh, have to enter them every single time we run any sort of composer uh, operation. And so what's going to happen now uh, is when we run sample data deploy, composer is going to go ahead and pull in some additional packages uh, that are going to be responsible for managing the sample data for our Magento 2 instance. our sample data packages have downloaded and we are now ready to install Magento. So what we'll want to do is let's go ahead and open up a blank text document and go ahead and copy this entire block right here. This is for the command line installation. And change any of the credentials, passwords, email address, anything you'd like to change. Of course, if you didn't use local.domain.com, you'll need to update both of these lines. Uh, you'll notice that we are pointed at our database Magento. The host name uh, is MySQL. Within Docker, the database container is aliased as MySQL, and so that's that's how it knows it instead of 127.0.0.1. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, assuming that you've got everything updated, let's go ahead and copy this over paste it into our terminal and this will take a minute because it's installing all of the sample data
Okay, now that Magento has finished installing, we should be ready to go ahead and visit it in our web browser. And I will warn you that the first time that you visit it from the browser, uh, the page is going to load slow. And that's because nothing has been cached. Uh, also, the website's going to be in developer mode, so things are getting generated on the fly. Uh, subsequent page loads will be a bit faster. We now have a fully installed and running instance of Magento 2.2.5 with optional sample data. And one thing I will do really quickly just to prove what I was saying earlier, which is that you should be able to tear down your Docker containers without fear of losing your entire database or any other aspects of your setup, is let's go ahead and tear it down. A quick Docker PS will prove that we have no containers running. Let's go ahead and refresh the browser and we shouldn't get anything. And lastly, we will go ahead and spin it back up. And when we refresh the browser, we should have our site back. There is no need to reinstall or do anything else. You can simply Docker Compose down and Docker Compose up. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do watch for the follow-up videos where we're going to be adding Redis, Xdebug, and Live Reload all in separate, uh, in separate videos. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.